Hi class, today we're going to do the analysis of consumer demand, income and substitution effects of price changes. This is on page 52 through 57 of your textbook. Recall in the last lecture we talked about what might happen to consumer demand when the price changes. Once again, we have to go back to our budget constraint. I do realize that I've been using the words budget constraint and budget line interchangeably. So when I say a budget constraint and you see me draw a line, it just means that I have translated the budget constraint into the budget line. So when I'm drawing a line, you know that it's, even if I call it the budget constraint, I mean the budget line. So let's say that given a particular set of prices and income, this is an individual's budget line. And of course, this is QF max, and this is QO max. And we know once again that the y-intercept or QO max is given by y over PO, and the x-intercept or QF max is given by y over PF. Now, thus, for, thus far, we have been looking at price changes, and I believe we decreased price. So let's just start with an increase in price, which would make the budget constraint or budget line move inward, because as PF increases, Y over PF, or the X-intercept, rotates in towards the origin. Remember that the y-intercept does not change when PF changes, as it is y over PO, and PF is an even part of that equation. So thus far, we've identified the point of tangency of the original budget line and the indifference curve, and call that QF1, and we also looked at someone with the same set of preferences. This is an individual consumer, and this is QF2. And we saw now that when price increases, quantity decreases, and we see a movement. We call this the total effect. Now, what's very interesting is that every price change has two effects. The total effect is equal to a substitution effect plus an income effect. The substitution effect of a price change is the effect of a change in a goods price on the demand for that good holding satisfaction constant. In other words, how much income would I have to give you when price went up to keep you just as happy as you were before? The income effect of a price change is the effect on the demand for X for the change in income brought about by the change in the price of X. Of course, when the price changes, the income you have to spend also changes. This is the income effect. Now, this is my favorite part of the class, actually. And what we're going to do is we are going to decompose that total effect into a substitution effect and an income effect. And we do this, and we can represent it by the Slutsky equation. So let's look at food and the price of food. So the total change, this would be the total effect, is equal to the substitution effect, 
which is the change in the quantity of food given a change in the price of food holding utility constant and we're going to subtract out the quantity of food multiplied by the change in the quantity of food given a change in real income. So this is the substitution effect and this is the income effect. Now why is this operator negative? That operator is negative because it adjusts in the income effect for the direction of the price change. Remember that when prices go up we substitute out of them and when prices go down we substitute into the particular good. This is the Slutsky equation. And Mr. Slutsky did this in 1915. So this is nothing new to us. 1915, that's a long time ago. So let's use a nice big graph. Quantity of food, quantity of other goods, our original prices some indifference curve some point of tangency QF1 QO1 this individual is in equilibrium at this quantity of food right here and this quantity of other goods right here. So now we're going to increase prices. We see that the budget line rotates around the maximum quantity of the good, which price didn't change, that would be other goods, and rotates in because now I can buy less food when prices increase. And I can look at this particular consumer draw a representative difference curve, say that QF2 is there. I have now purchased less of both other goods and food. Remember this movement from QF1 to QF2 is the total effect. How do we break that down into an income and a substitution effect? Well, remember that the substitution effect said, how much income would I have to give you in order to keep you as happy as you were before the price increase? So here's another little trick that we do. And to keep me as happy as I was before, I really want to be on this indifference curve. I want to be as happy as I was before at these new prices. Well, I would have to give you enough income to make you as happy as the other prices. Remember, income is a parallel shift, so I draw an imaginary budget line parallel to the new budget line, which is steeper, it's the red one here, and tangent to the old, the original indifference curve, where you would be just as happy. And indeed, there is a point of tangency on this new indifference curve, or this, this imaginary budget line and indifference curve, and that point of tangency is there, and it's somewhere in between QF1 and QF2 and we call that QF star. I have now broken down the total effect from QF1 to QF2 into the movement from QF1 to QF star, which is the substitution effect, and the movement from QF star to QF2, which is the income effect. So why is this a substitution effect? Notice, as price went up, I substituted out of food, indeed, less food, out of food, and actually into other goods. Now look at how we identify the income effect. 
income effects always have a parallel shift. So here we move from the green imaginary budget line parallel to the new red one, which says I have an income effect. And indeed, I see the movement from QF star to QF2 as the income effect. So what does the Slutsky equation have to say about this? A change in QF given a change in PF, or that's the total effect, and we saw it was less than zero. I increase price and decrease quantity is equal to a change in QF given a change in PF holding utility constant. That's this movement from here to here. You can see QF1 to QF star. And that, indeed, is the substitution effect. That is less than zero. As I increase price, I substitute out of the more expensive good. And then we said I subtract QF, the change in QF, given a change in income. Now, what happened? This is actually minus a less than zero, right? Because um, no, actually minus, sorry, a greater than zero because I had less real income and I took less food, right? Less real income as price went up. I look at the movement from QF star to QF2. So I am going in the same direction. Negative minus a positive. This is a normal good for the income effect a negative minus a positive, because income effects that are positive means as I decrease income, I decrease quantity, and I get something that is more negative. Both effects are moving towards taking less food. I substitute out of food because the price went up, and I substitute out of it, and I take less food because as income, real income decreases, the amount of food I demand decreases, normal good. We'll stop there, and I'll do another one for you.